<clears throat> All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the round table here at Calvary Assembly of God. But uh, Pastor Matt, won't you greet us and then open us in prayer and we'll hop in tonight. Absolutely. So um, we were uh, we were talking about the, the sale of the building and uh, what's it going to look like. You know, what are we going to take with us, that kind of thing. And um, so someone asked me recently about the, the tiled stuff we did and all the work. And I was just like, <laughs> let it burn. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> and the reason why I say that, not to, not to be funny, but the stuff that we see here, it's just temporary. You know, who it's just stuff. You know, let's, let's take what we can actually take for the rest of our yeah. eternity. This. Which is, yeah. <laughs> We're going to bring souls. our Bibles. <laughs> You know, let's focus on what, what is eternal, focus on people, focus on that, and, and forget tile and forget paint. Who cares about that? Yep. Amen. Open us up in prayer tonight. Sure. God, we thank you for your, we thank you for your healing power. We thank you for your willingness to show up. Lord, I pray in the midst of moments that we feel we don't get healed. But Lord, we need healing nonetheless. Emotionally, physically. Lord, there's so many things going on in this world. Uh, spiritually, physically, sicknesses. God, we lift all those needs up to you. Lord, provide comfort where there needs to be comfort, strength where there needs to be strength. And let us understand that when we are weak, you are made strong. Help us to honor you in everything we do. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Revelation chapter 17. Uh, not many passages open with uh, a word about a prostitute, but tonight... <laughs> It does. Um, well, this is one of those passages that almost demands interpretation. If you just try to read it at face value, you're going to walk away puzzled and confused. I think the two biggest interpretations that people want when they read it is who, who are the players in this passage, and the second one that people demand an interpretation just in your spirit as you're reading it is, where is this happening? So um, many scholars have been through this passage and combed through it and believe that their answer is the best. But we know Pastor Matt and I have the, the corner of the market on that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just kidding. I mean, it is... <laughs> it is very difficult and very tempting to explain these passages in light of the dominant figures on the planet now. And it's very hard to, to, as one of our professors in college says, it's very difficult to hold the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other and make them mix. It's very difficult to do that because, let's face it, newspaper writers... I don't know that they have the same credibility as God. <laughs> we can't put them on the same platform, but we can draw at least world events are starting to, to coalesce, as it were. So uh, we are going to talk about that to some degree, but I want to remind us as we study this tonight, we are, we are studying again the revelation of Jesus Christ which makes me read the passage differently. The first thing I want to know when I read the passage is, what is Christ in an overview trying to say to me? Only secondarily do I, I hunt for the minutia, if that makes sense. So as it's introduced tonight, we, we are going to uh, think about the players. Who are they? What does this mean in light of other passages? And also we, we can look at where this might be occurring and I don't think that's nearly important as the overview of Christ as being explained to us in, a, in yet another facet tonight. Can you all get with that? So Pastor Matt, anything opening on Revelation 17 you want no, to say? No, that's a good intro. You can go with it. All right, let's go. Revelation chapter 17 verse number one. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Don't you love the drama of verse 1 already? Like, come away with me. I want to show you a mystery. So already, my questions start to say, All right, 
Jesus has mysteries that he wants to reveal to us that have their roots on earth. And I know this shouldn't be a shocker to the church, but many things on earth are demonically charged, handled, and carried out on a daily basis, even in the most innocuous, seemingly innocent situations on earth. Now we have to mix that reality that says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So I'm challenged already tonight. All right, God, you own it all, but it appears that you allow that which you own to be demonically charged in some geographical locations on earth. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? And he would like to, I believe in this passage, kind of pull back and show us some visibility of what maybe the rest of the world could be deceived by, but the church looks into it and says, wow, that's pretty wild information that God is a, a mystery revealer. He's going to open our eyes to some things in the passage tonight. Are we still all right with the, with the passage, Pastor Matt? Anything on verse 1? I, I will tell you, it's going to be tough, uh, at least going through the first section, because I'm, I'm going to want to... Okay, this is what this means, this is what this means, this is what this means. And I've but, done that, and everybody else does. Yeah. So and, do it. And then we get to verse 8, and, and the rest of it, and it tells you, this is what this means, this is what this means. <laughs> right. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to hold back some of this stuff, because it actually explains it, especially some of the verbiage, how they put the New King James, I, I, I get I like the way the NLT, so I might point some of that stuff out because some when I read the NL or a New King James, I'm like, all right, wait, what did that just say? I didn't get it, and then I read the NLT. I'm like, okay, I'm good now. We're good. We can continue reading. Um, right. So, so I, some of the stuff you're like, okay, wait, wait, what does that mean? Just breathe. The whole chapter explains the first half, or the second half explains the first half. So just which thank God. Yeah. Because you read the first half and you're like, oh, 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 oh. What's going on? Yeah, because the first time I went through this, I'm actually reading it, and I actually stopped because I, I was reading commentary. At the same, I had two commentaries up. I'm reading the both translations, and I'm like, I just stopped. I was like, Lord, why, why can't I see what they see? I don't understand this translation. And then when you continue reading the chapter, like, oh, oh, <laughs> they aren't so smart in it. <laughs> Got <after> it. All. <laughs> so. If you don't understand certain things, like even even the, the first the first thing here with the um, it's the first one yeah verse one many waters what's waters it it explains it actually in verse I think six uh, fifteen it explains what waters are breathe uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into that all right all right sorry go ahead nope that's all right <clears throat> so he th the angel that just got done doing wrath says all right come away with me I'm gonna show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Well, I thought we were done with judgment. Well, not quite. <laughs> there, there's one more that needs to be handled. Not that this is a, a complete judgment on the earth, but it is on a particular uh, harlot who sits on many waters. With, who the, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Um, when, when, we, when we see what's happening here, we're not talking about a harlot that saddles up at the local saloon. We're talking so, about someone that is intoxicated by the actions that they commit on the face of the earth that draw people further into a deep chasm away from God. Does that make sense? So let's keep going. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Have you ever heard of that before? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit called Jesus into the wilderness after a period of fasting, right? To reveal to him what the Spirit's will for the entirety of his ministry would be. And Satan was there to tempt him at every corner. Amazing, right? So... Um, he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names, 
of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Uh, I don't know why, you know, I told, I, I know this congregation knows that I am a visual learner and I, I picture graffiti all over the side of the dragon, <laughs> uh, blasphemous names all over the side of, or bumper stickers, however you want to say it, just complete graffiti and defilement introduces it's not like they're hiding it anymore you know what i'm saying i think for most of our lives in this room the darkness kind of has hidden in the shadows and i don't know about when you realized it but spiritual darkness doesn't hide any longer it's like, here we are, here's our channel, this is what we're about, here's our books, here's what we're about, here's our websites, here's what we're about. And I think that's what we're, we're seeing here is with the blasphemous names all on the front lines, you're not, you're not hiding anymore, are you? No. We know exactly who you are. Any comments so far? Uh, no, that's really good because, like, when you, what you have going on here, it, 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 it's amazing. We were just talking about this before class started. Um, was the the article we read about um, uh, the Pope and, and the Catholic Church? And now that I've read this article about the Chrislam, cri, 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 help me out, Chrislam. Is that right? Yeah. About Chrislam. So, so, do you want to introduce the article yes. now, or? Well, I want to I want to just introduce it. To put this in your mind because it it fits perfectly in this chapter now i don't know if it's because i'm trying to force it in there because the first time my wife showed me the article i i don't because of what i do for a living i don't watch a lot of local news i don't watch a lot of news just because i don't want to prejudge people that are in the news okay so the problem with that is i miss some of the bigger stuff like this so my, my wife sends this to me on the way here. I read it. I'm like, that's not real. There's no way he did this. There's no way. It's like, well, the Pope actually has done a lot of stuff that people are upset about. I'm like, what? Like, I, I don't, I, again, I don't watch that stuff. I don't watch the news like that. I don't look for that stuff. I don't research it. I'm like, ooh, what's the Pope did this week? And I'm going to be mad at I don't. I don't do that. So when she sends me this article, I was like, research it. Don't just look at one article. Find out if this is true. And she sent it to me, he's like, it's true. I was like, oh my gosh. All right, so in a nutshell, um, uh, again, try to, try to look at Revelation chapter 17, but in a nutshell, what, what he's saying is that the, there's, there's many ways many people are going to be able to get saved. There's, there's more than one way. So to clarify, you're saying that there's an article published that the Pope is saying that there's more than one way to, to God. Yes. Which is in contrast to John 14, 6, which says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So we're not talking about some local pastor in Jackson, Mississippi. We're talking about a world, all eyes on, cameras focused. Say what you have to say, sir. And all eyes, honestly, are on the Pope. I mean, there's people, like, I, I, don't, I don't know if you grew up in the Catholic Church. I grew up in the Catholic Church. And I've always known it's like God, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Pope. He's in there somewhere. Like it's, it's right, he's right there in line. Of all the living beings on this planet, Pope is number one. And if he says it, I mean, it's, that's it. And uh, that, that's, that's, that's always how I was always understood it. I don't know if that's 100% accurate. That's how I received it. That's how I was understood when I was being taught. So when he says something, I mean, it's bank. Is, does that make sense? Yeah. So that was always my understanding. What did the Pope say? What did he think? What are we going to do now? Um, so that's always how I've always been taught. Now he's saying, all right, look, we're going to do this thing where all these religions are going to come together. And my mind's like, oh, it's coming soon. Like, it's coming soon, soon. Right. All right, so if you can picture what's happening, keep that in your mind and watch how perfectly this sets up throughout this whole chapter. And you're like, oh, my goodness. It's just, it's, it's, it's neat to see it unfold. Is, does that make sense? Yeah. All right, and the, the, the phrase that's coined there is chrislam, 
which means that Christianity ought to join is the Islamic faith and therefore dominate the globe as one world religion. Because, like Islam says, we serve the same God. Okay, that's what they teach. So why not have one service? Do you understand the thinking? Right. So when, when people begin to say the word ecumenical, it may mean something innocent, like it would here, I think, that if the, the Presbyterian Church and the Methodist Church and the um, uh, Grace Church down the road says, hey, you guys want to do an Easter sunrise service together? Sure, because we're all going to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. That word is interpreted as ecumenical. And so you might hear the word ecumenical in the article and you think, oh, it's innocuous. It's just a couple churches getting together. No, they're talking about merging religions now. Does that make sense? So even the National Day of Prayer, which was sacred Christian, has now become ecumenical in the sense of world religions are now prayed from the, the pulpit on the National Day of Prayer in this country. So I just want you all to know this is this is what's happening in that article explaining where we're at culturally and spiritually as a nation and as a world. Are we all right now? So as we read, just watch how perfectly this sets up. <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, again, we're, we're seeing a scarlet beast which is full of names, blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Of course, we've seen this before. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornications. And the biggest face tattoo that's ever been <laughs> written is on her head. Yeah. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of all of harlots, and of the abominations of the earth. My, my friend John said, her forehead must be <laughs> huge. <laughs> yeah, or the font is really tiny. Yeah, we're... Which makes sense why John could not keep his eyes off of her. He was amazed by her. He's like, what in the world? Yeah. Uh, the beast introduces her, full of blasphemies, but look, look how she's arrayed. In the finest of jewels, the finest of clothing, the purples, the precious stones, she adorns herself as wealthy. What is the condition of the world at this moment? Desolate. Yeah. Desolate, poor, nasty, starving, hungry. Look at this one. Showing up like there's not a, a problem. Dressed like this with a tattoo like that on your head. <laughs> You're a sight. <laughs> I, I don't know. you have anything else to say about I, this? I, I saw some commentary say, like, okay, so this right here, the gold, the purple, the scarlet, the pearls, all that. Okay, this means that. That means I, I didn't get what they were coming from. Mm -hmm. What I got was I'm here to impress you by my looks. Yeah. Almost like the in Spain with the matador, yeah. you know, yeah. come on, come on, let me get your attention. I think he... All she's doing is just trying to impress you. And that's, I mean, she's just, she's the, what is it, is it the mother of the, mother of harlots? Mm -hmm. I mean, she's the trainer. She, she takes care of all the other whores. Yeah. She raises them. She takes yeah. care of them. She's the mother. She, she. The, the madam. Yeah. She gets them ready to go for business. And this is all about fancy stuff let me get your attention and doesn't isn't that what hollywood always does to us isn't that what that lady on the street always does to us? isn't that when that guy tries to impress other people because of his attitude or his his vehicle or his new tires or his sound system it's things to impress somebody else this this is what she does this is this is her mo let me just impress you by how i look how i act and then i'm going to take over so I love how verse 4 says that she holds a cup full of abominations mm -hmm. and filthiness mm -hmm. and fornic of her fornications. Then verse 6 tells us what she's getting drunk off of. Mm. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. 
So we don't have to wonder what the abominations and filthiness is in her cup. She really enjoys when Christians who have turned their life over to Christ at this moment or moments prior in history where she has been doing her work, kill all Christians. And somehow that is intoxicating to this individual. I mean, it's, it, it's uh, Nazi Germany on steroids. You know what I mean? Kill the Jews. And there, there was great joy taken on by people that would just kill Jews however they could in any way, shape, form, or manner. We see the same thing here. Anything else on that? And be careful with amazement. You know, I don't know if the first time you read the amazement part, he wasn't like, ooh, look at this. Yeah. Amaze me, oh my gosh, what? It's like shock and awe. Yeah. I remember when I saw, I went to uh, Austria, and I, I went to a, a concentration camp, and some of the pictures, the, the, the syringe they would use, it was massive syringe they would use for adrenaline shot because these people, you, you've probably seen pictures of people in a concentration camp, skin and bones. Well, they're expected to do all this work. And so they had this syringe. They would go to people if they just were just no strength at all. They would fall to the ground. They'd take this syringe, shove it in their heart, pump the adrenaline so they're good to go the rest of the day. And I stood there in amazement. Is, is, yeah. Does that make sense? That's the amazement we're talking about. Yeah. Your example's better than mine. I remember going to New York City and there's a tourist attraction called the Naked Cowboy. The guy stands there with a guitar over his private parts and the rest of them, and you're like, I'm amazed. I'm amazed by this. Yeah, I think he's had to put some pants on as of late. It's American flag. Yeah, some, yeah, but, yeah. And I'm just like, oh my. But it's stuff like that, and you're like, I came to the city for a hot dog, <laughs> not for that. <laughs> I came to the city for a Yankees baseball game, not, not for, for that. <laughs> I came to see the buildings and the structures and Wall Street, not that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, my goodness, you, some stuff you see, and you're like, oh, you can't unsee that. <laughs> Stephanie, how do we get from, this is how you should dress because we want to kill Christians. That, that's what has to be merged at some point in history where this is equated. Living this way in this harlotry equates with we can't stand Jesus followers, let's kill them. You know what, one culture or generation <clears throat> allows in moderation, the next one demands Abundance. Yeah, right. and, and, what, and what happened, it's the boiled frog syndrome. You right. slowly work towards, you know, the, the devil and his minions. I mean, they're playing the long game. Yeah. The real the long game. They've, they got, they've got all the time in the world, literally. And they're just playing it out, man. It's a little bit at a time. And if I can take that boat and just knock it over one degree, they'll never know. Until they get to their destination and hey we're supposed to be here and we're down here yeah i pastor matt's explained this before and i'll let him do it again here tonight with the the, the bait and the fishing you, you, they're throwing yep. throwing lures yeah what they do is they if you will like in in fishing you have a tackle box of just fish and shrimp and worms and and you just don't know what they're biting you know i was when when, when you go fishing for you know, in the, in the ocean, 
and um, I was always told, like, listen, in the murky water, immediately I'm thinking, I, I got it. You got to use the black one or the bright one. So make sure you use the brown one. And I'm like, but the water's brown. Yeah, but that's, that's what they use in this shrimp. The reason why they know that is because they know what is biting in that area. And that's the way the demons work. They know Amanda is biting anger right now. Most of the time she doesn't bite it. But they're making sure everybody knows, hey guys, Amanda's biting, biting dang, uh, uh, anger right now. So make sure we do everything we can to throw that bait out as much as possible. Because there's a lot of different shrimps. There's a lot of different worms out there. It's not just one worm. It's, it's, it's how you can use it to get the person's attention, and that's the way spiritual warfare works. Yeah, and fishing is a patient man's sport, right? Yeah. Where you, you're just waiting. You're waiting for the, the, uh, the bite. And if it happens, great. If not, you walk away. Yes. I'm thinking of the educational system we look at the news today, like the colleges. Yes. This all didn't start yesterday. Oh, no. This started 25, 30 years ago. Yes. Here we are. And all of a sudden, people are like, wow, when yeah. did this happen? Yeah, I was at the dentist office with Savannah today, and part of the application, the paperwork you have to fill out, they wanted to know, was she male, female, and then there was this other category, and another category of they, which, which pronoun did I want to use? And I'm just like, let's just scratch this part of the application. <laughs> She's a little girl, for crying out loud, and that's, that's who she is. But you're right. Since Why does this need to be on the dental application like we're working on teeth here not the other biological parts <laughs> we're walk we're working on neuter parts of the body <laughs> right now um, but my goodness wh where we have come yes but again back to this the 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 revelry is not the Yankees won the World Series the revelry is look how many Christians we killed and that's the drunken fornication of this harlot. So let's continue. <clears throat> but the angel said to me, why do you marvel? Why do you look so shocked, John? Well, I am from AD 90. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. So aren't you glad that the, the veil is about to come off? That's the point of this whole passage, I believe. We're tempted, who, where, what? We want to know all this stuff. And Jesus is like, don't you know who I am? I'm the revealer of secrets. It's been a secret probably your whole existence. But let me show you through one of my angelic uh, hosts what's really going on down there on earth. Does that help? Pastor Matt, you want to pick it up in verse 8 or explain? Yeah. And jump. If you notice, like, um, why, why do you marvel? Why do, you, why do you marvel at this lady? Think about everything that John's seen so far in Revelation. Yeah. And that was so amazing. It was mesmerizing to him, even though he's... That, that's how grotesque this thing is. Yeah. Like, to think, you have the blood of martyrs in your cup, and you're drunk on it. Mm -hmm. Like, this is an amazing give me, moment. Yeah, give me and more. And this is what stops them yeah not not the vials not the destruction yeah. of earth yeah all right show me something else yeah, <laughs> yeah. but a, another facet of the mystery of christ why does he do it this way i don't know but he does so let's continue the beast that you saw was and is not and will send out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition do you, do you see the the wording here I wasn't crazy about the New King James. Uh, look at the NLT. The beast you saw was once alive, but isn't now. Oh, okay. I got it now. Those here. who dwell on the earth will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they see the beast that was and is not, and yet is. The camera view goes from the beast to those who dwell on the earth, and we're marveling those who dwell on the earth are marveling whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was alive, dead, and now is back. Making sense? Mm -hmm. Is that where we're at? Yes. All right. So John is amazed, but so are the people, starstruck, awestruck 
by this image, by the harlot, by the, the fanciness, by her drunkenness. They're marveling at the whole picture of what this is. But I think their marvel is a whole different than the amazement of John, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think what theirs is, I'm, I am impressed by what you have. Yeah. Because we've got nothing. Where did you get what you've got? Your outfit looks fantastic. Like you were saying about the Emmys. Hey, you, you look fantastic. You look great. Where have you been shopping? Because as far as we know, the earth is destroyed and there ain't much left. But somewhere in the coffer, somebody's got something to wear and it's her. Um, and, and the world is impressed by her. Verse 9. Keep going. You yep. Uh, yeah, we're good now. Here's the mind which was wisdom or has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sit the woman sits and that that seven mountains a lot of people think it's rome there are seven hills that make up rome of the original roman empire but it's just yeah you want you want to hear them? yeah good aventine hill kaelin hill capitoline hill esquiline hill palatine hill i want to say urinal but it's not it's cor coronal viminal yeah. hill these are the seven hills of, of Rome and why I believe Pastor Matt was beginning to uh, wait a minute that's where the Pope lives Yeah. wait a minute we're talking about world religions coalescing could this be one and the same is what we're starting to ask ourselves because the harlot is revealing to the world look where I'm getting look where I'm getting my stuff from these seven hills, this this position, this place on earth that has still plenty for me to get what I need and operate out of the function in which I'll operate to do what I need to do. Make it sense? And, and just remember that because this is so important later on in this chapter where this one world religion, let's all come together. All these religions, these false religions, these whatever religion you come up with, this is so important because it's important now even in the midst of revelation to turn people away from God but it's even more important later on in this chapter so just just really grab a hold of, of that because it, it really becomes amazing here in a moment because when I when I first read it I was like wait a minute let me reread what I, I think I just mistranslated some section of this chapter because of what they just said so remember this is a big deal all these uh, Islam and all these one world religions, this is a big deal, huge deal. And watch how it's treated later on. Yeah, yeah. and so I, I think the hard part for a lot of people that are reading along in Revelation, their, their first earth experience is with, with the Apostle John on the island of Patmos. Then he's taken up into the heavenlies. Then he's dropped down into a scene in Jerusalem. Then he's taken back up into the heavenlies. And now he's dropped down on where we're assuming he could be in Rome. Yes. Right? Are you following? Yeah. Where It's not like we're just getting blips on the radar. We're following the journey as he's going up and down. And all of this is not happening in terms of flight of travel. Remember, he said, I was in the spirit. Right? So theoretically, he's still on the island of Patmos for the whole deal. But his mind and his spirit goes places that his body cannot yet travel. Are we making sense? Because he's still held by gravity and everything else that, that this world holds us down here. Are we making sense? I hope so. Verse 10, Pastor Matt. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. And the five... Um, there, the five is Egypt, Assyrian, Babylon, uh, Medo-Persia, and, and Greece. The, the one that currently is at that time, nowadays, it's, it's long gone. It's, it's Rome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just so, so you know. Um, yeah. And the, and the beast that was, is verse number 11, and the beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. Or destruction the ten horns which you saw 
are ten kings who have received no kingdom as of yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. All right, so are you catching what's happening here? So we have, when you look at the timeline of history, you have all these kingdoms that are in charge. They're gone. Rome, gone. Now we have this one more kingdom that's about to come, but relax, he ain't going to be here long. So that's what's happening, and that's basically the, the, the one kingdom, the ten-toed nation, they come together. And they're going to have just a, a, a moment. Yeah. Yeah, we've talked about the ten-toed nations in this class before, and, and you know, when you're thinking about it, you're like, oh, they're going to they're gonna rule for such a long time, and then this passage says, well, for about an hour. Yeah. I mean, remember, we're talking about the beast who loves the camera. He loves to parade himself, but he's trying not to dominate the camera because he knows people are sick of him. So let's put up these other people. All right, you're out, you're out, you're out. <laughs> I mean, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. Like one after another after another. All right, you guys are not working out as leadership. You know what? I'll be in charge of everything now. I, I think that's what we're seeing unfold, mm -hmm. Pastor Matt. Is that what you're seeing? No, that's perfect, yep. Seeing as well. All right, keep going. Uh, verse 13. These are, the, these are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. If you remember, we talked about a long time ago, we, uh, Pastor Kevin actually did a really good job explaining like, kind of like the earth. We don't know this is how it's going to be, but it really made sense when he did this. If you break up the earth in 10 equal parts, all right, you got a part, you got a part, you got a part, you got a part. Okay, you 10 nations, listen, we're going through chaos right now. Take care of your stuff. So the United States is going to be one of those sections, or maybe the United States, Canada, New Mexico, maybe it's North and South America. I, we don't know. Yeah. But what we do know is there are storage units that are ready to go for emergencies. Mm -hmm. so, so if you can picture that, everything goes flat, there's no, there's no trees, you, you have no, if you remember with the last week we had the blood with the ocean and the water, so the fishing industry is shot. Like all this, all this is happening, all you have are these ten nations all right, we need, we need to start coming together. We have all this food. We're good to go. So now we have this one voice. Now we need one leader. So they turn all their authority. They take the box that controls the button to push, and they hand it to the Antichrist. <laughs> now he's the head honcho over everybody. Is, is that making sense? Yeah. And, but wait a minute. Uh, I've been wanting to interview about interview you about this for a long time because you lived in Colorado for a while. I heard that underneath the Denver airport, there's just like this massive, I don't know if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know? It's like not there's the, this massive getaway. Like it's not the Denver airport. It's actually Cheyenne mountain yeah. and uh, you have NORAD, which is about a mile or two down underneath the, uh, the mountain. And could that be one of these type of spots where we've got yeah. stuff, you you can't help but think back to the first implementation of anything like this was Joseph when he got the dream. Yeah, the of seven years. The seven or the interpretation of the dream, the seven years of of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. He says, All right, we gotta tax the people, take one fifth of what they have and we're gonna put it in the storehouses and then this is the genius part, he sells back <laughs> to them what they gave freely. So genius. But uh, that's what we see happening now in the earth. I think because people read this stuff and they're like, wow. But I also think the hand of God is moving even for, for a time such as this. So, all right, continue. All right, 14. These will make war with the lamb and the lamb will overcome them for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits and peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. I, do, you, do you hear the plan of the one that gets drunk off the blood of the saints? You know what we're going to do. We're, we're going to make war with God. Like, what are you talking about? Um, when, when you look at that reality of what verse 14, these will make war with the lamb and the lamb will overcome them. That's the understatement of the year in the Bible. 
I mean, it's just kind of said kind of bland. Well, you know, they're going to make war with the lamb, but the lamb's going to overcome them. I mean, he will overcome these individuals, however, whoever they think they are. And, and take note of who the audience is. Do you notice who the audience is? Us. <clears throat> those who are with him, those who believe in him, those who follow him, they're, they're, they're right there. But I also wanted to comment on that. Have not our movies in, in the last hundred years trained people to think that they can go with sword and spear against the gods mm -hmm. and overcome them? You know, and e even those patriotic type movies like Independence Day where we overcome aliens and the end of the world because of Will Smith. It's like, give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Right. Hollywood always wins over these forces. Yeah. This, you, can, you can start to believe your own press that we got this. Right. We got this. We got the gods in our hands. So that type of thinking will certainly rise, I'm sure. Keep going. So this is the amazing part. Remember I told you in the very end, the, 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 the verse 16, this is the verse I'm talking about. So if you see the ten horn nations, or ten toe nations, the ten horns, which you saw on the beasts, these will hate the harlot. Wait, time out. Aren't they on the same team? Doesn't that bother you? They're on the same team for the longest time, and now they're not. So these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Yeah. Whoa. Well, I think we got to go back. Um, remember verse 2 or verse 1, you said the great harlot who sits on many waters? Yeah. It was going to be interpreted in verse 15. The, the waters which you saw where the, har where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Mm -hmm. So these are the Gentile nations of the world that she's been kind of iron fisting, <laughs> saying, I I've got the whole thing in charge. Again, Pastor Matt's making the point now in verse 16. The ten horns, which you saw, which were already described to us, are these ten kings, are saying, all right, we're at odds with the harlot here. Um, we, we've got issues here. Our allegiance is to Antichrist, not to her. So we see trouble in the camp, so to speak. And they're on the same team as long as one can feed off the mm -hmm. other. Once you're done with it, she's, yeah. she's done her purpose. She's yeah. Filled. It's like, she's not needed now. Right. Enemy. But, but what if she's inebriated in the room and thinking she still has power? And now, shut up. <laughs> we used you for what we needed you for. Shut up. Just go away. And she's yelling on her way out the room <laughs> type of thing is kind of what I see. Well, I, I was amazed by one of the commentaries I read. I actually wrote it, I wrote it down right here as far as the whole, they, the scarlet beast and his ten horns all hate the prostitute. And the prostitute what he said was representing all the false religions of the world the the religion of the antichrist the ten nations hate it's like wait a minute aren't they on the same team i say that to say this he can care less about what your religion is right, right. he doesn't care about my religion he doesn't care what you're he doesn't care what you're following he doesn't even care that you're following him he just doesn't want you to do what follow christ yeah it's all he cares about because at the very end he's going to wipe all that out anyways and it's all about him so if that's what's represented here as false religions they, they eat it up they they destroy everything that's not worship to this yeah at this point mm -hmm. so it talk about evil having its day uh the empire strikes back would be the the, the movie reference again L look at it making its evil uh, face shine yet again go ahead verse 17, 17. Yeah. for God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled one more verse right yep uh, lastly verse number 18 and the woman who you, whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth yeah so again at the beginning I said you know you're demanding where where is this where is this place the woman who you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth where is that and all people all types of scholars begin to say well I know where it's at 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 I don't think that's the point 
I think that there is a, as I said earlier tonight, there is a geo. God owns the earth in the fullness thereof, but he allows segments, populations, areas of earth to be demonically controlled. And I think this is one of them. It doesn't matter where it is, what the name of it is. That's none of our concern, I don't think. But we can think about it. It's not a sin to go home and Google and do some homework and find out where this location is. But just know that in this path. Right. It, it just shows you that there are cities that are controlled that will be able to be controlled and continue to be controlled at such a level of not political thought, but of demonic, Luciferian, wicked thought controlled that will implement whatever the beast wants. I don't know. Any closing thoughts on that? Um, the, the biggest thing I got a hold of this, if, if, if you can grab a hold of it, it's, it's not about know where the location is. Know, know which religions are involved with this. No, okay, put that aside. Let's make sure we take care of what's happening in here. Yeah. This, <clears throat> this, this, you fix this. Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about what the religions are. Don't worry about the one world. Don't worry about the sit. Don't, who, who cares? Because it's going to be really evident. It's like, I think it's going to be right here. Oh, no, it's right there. It's, it's, clearly, it's right there. I mean, I was wrong. Yeah, yeah who cares? Yeah. Fix this. Make sure this relationship is right with Christ. Yeah. I mean, if you're right with Christ, you're the audience of watching him take care of business. Yeah. Hey, we're with him. We're, we're chosen. We're faithful. We're with him, and he's taking care of his own business. He doesn't need us to fight. Yeah, or, or the Pauline one, all I know is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's right. I mean, that's boiled my whole ministry down to that. Yeah. Right? So uh, a cryptic passage that explained itself, thank God. We didn't have to put too much brain power to it except to read it to you and make it a little more clear tonight that, again, the mysteries of the world are already figured out and known by God. And if you look at verse 17, for God has put it in their hearts. God is ordaining even these moments in history when we would say God is certainly not involved with this. Imagine he's, a, he's in control of their thought process to create a mindset that wants to fight him. <laughs> it's just mind boom. God, you're still in charge. You're still sovereign. You've never lost control, not even in these crazy moments in scripture. You're still in charge. Pastor Matt. And that prostitute, all the stuff that prostitute does, think about all the things that goes bad with prostitution and every, that whole arena. As powerful as we think it is, it is nothing more than a pawn that the devil has no care about. All he cares about is bringing people away from God. Yep. It's just a pawn. Amen. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the study tonight. Let's bow our heads in prayer and close tonight. Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you that you are a revealer of mysteries, even if they are of a dark, evil persuasion. Tonight you are revealing even more that we are to be aware of. And God, I'm thankful that we can and that we can have intelligent conversations now about where the world is going. And God, help us in this, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.